Hello there, cried Tyrion. Hello there, cried Tyrion. I can't say it. Criterion. Mm. Yeah. Uh. I guess I can't. I guess we're not saying last names today. So. Hello there, Criterion. Here. Uh. Number four forty-five. Max. Oh. Max. This guy. That guy. That guy. No, no, that guy. My Max. The earrings of Madame D. Uh, uh, uh. Seriously, what the fuck? It's like we're not doing last names today. Apparently, we're not. Apparently, nobody's saying last names. Anyway, 1953, 100 minutes, black and white, menorah, all French, blah blah blah. blah. Um, to be fair, this is a good movie. This is not a well, it's not a great movie, but it's not a bad one either. It's definitely, I think, probably the best of the three we've seen. I'd say probably the strongest movie of the one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give it an A, but I'll give you the plot. I'll give you the whole plot because it's probably the easiest plot. This, I mean, although it's, it's actually, the plot is confusing as hell, but it makes sense in the end. Um, so basically, it's about this woman, uh, Louise, Louise de, um, who like lives this really extravagant life and I guess she like rings up her husband's and she's married to this count or this general or something and she like has to pay off his debts or something or her debts and so she sells these earrings that she has to this jeweler knowing that her husband I guess gave them to her um, her husband Andre uh, played by uh, Charles Boyer and so he, he ends up selling them to the, so he ends up selling them to, she ends up selling them to, um, he finds out that um, the jeweler, uh, Remy, I think, finds out that, that, you know, they were, you know, that he didn't know or whatever, when she apparently, like, lies to, Louise lies to Andre and says, Oh, I lost them at the opera, or somebody stole them at the opera when they go out to the opera. And so Remy ends up telling Andre that, hey, your wife was in here and she sold her earrings. And so he gets really upset about this. And so he ends up agreeing to buy them back, and he gives them to his mistress, Lola. And Lola ends up giving, um, ends up selling them off to pay debts she has. And they're bought by this Italian guy, um, Fabrizio Donati, played by um, Vittorio De Sica, you know, in one of his one of his interesting acting roles, separate from directing. And so he's so he's going to Paris, and I guess he ends up meeting meeting Andre, and then through Andre he meets Louise, and. They go dancing every night, and they end up meeting. And um, the Baron uh, um, or Andre ends up going away, and they keep dancing, and they fall for each other. And when Andre comes back, uh, Louise decides to stop seeing him. Um, however, they go out to they go out hunting, and he finds Andre finds out that uh, Louise has feelings for. Um, Donati, when I guess he falls off a horse and she ends up like freaking out about it and like fainting, and so he's like, "Uh, something's wrong here," you know. And so she ends up taking this vacation out of nowhere and ends up leaving both of them. And while he's away, while she's away, uh, Donati like you know writes her all these letters and. She plans on riding back, but she ends up tearing him and throwing him out the window and being a friggin' litter bug. God, that pissed me off. She's like, throwing all this paper out the window. It turns into snow. Oh, God. Oh, God. That's so symbolic. Oh, God. Um, but, yeah. So, anyway. So, I guess... So, she ends up getting back the earrings um, through... Uh, 
uh, Donati. Donati ends up giving her the earrings, I guess, but, but Donati doesn't necessarily know that those were the earrings that, you know, he doesn't know that those were her earrings initially. And so seeing them again, like, totally, you know, changes her mind, and suddenly, you know, they mean something to her. And so when she gets back to Paris, she ends up deciding to continue to see him. And so she ends up, like, having to convince him when she gets him back, she ends up having to convince Andre that she lost them in her, you know, in her glove. Oh, yeah, I just left them in a glove, yeah. Even though he knows the truth. He knows that she's lying out her ass, you know. So... And so anyway, so at the end of the, uh, so when he goes back to, uh, they go to a ball, and Andre ends up taking the earrings from Luis and showing them to Nanadi and revealing that he kind of knows about them. And so he ends up telling her, so he ends up telling him to go take, to take them to the jeweler so he can, so Donati can sell them and Andre can buy them back a third time so he can give them to Luis so they can mean, so they're a gift to her, like from him to her again. Um, and so Andre, you know, and Luis ends up, you know, getting all depressed because um, Donati is like, oh, you know, I can't see you anymore because, you know, because you've been lying to me all this time and so I can't see you anymore. And so Luis gets all depressed and Andre, you know, shows her the earrings and says, look, you have to, um, you have to, you know, give these to your niece because she just had a baby and, you know, you got to give them to her because, you know, if anything. And so she does. Um, but the niece ends up selling them back to Remy and Remy finds them because she has to pay off a debt. And so um, Andre has to go back and, and he's like, here, I'll sell them to you again. And he's like, no, screw that. No, I'm not doing this. And so now at this point, Andre's pissed. He goes to Donati. He challenges him to a duel. And Louise is like, don't, don't fight him. Don't you know, tell him Donati, don't fight him, even though Donati has, you know, does not love her anymore. This is just, this is an honor thing. This isn't trying to, like, he ain't trying to get with her or anything like that. And so, and so she ends up um, going off to, the, going off to the, um, the duel, and she hears a gunshot. And she realizes it's her husband, and she shoots, and then I guess, and the shock, you know, that he hit, she ends up um, falling down, and I guess she ends up dying, you know, by the by the shock of it all. So, anyway, um, so yeah, that's the movie. Um, again, it's a better movie than La Ronde ou La Placier, definitely the best. I think in order, it's probably that this um, La Ronde and La Placier. Um, but yeah, what the fuck is her last name? What the fuck is her last name? Um, apparently, in the in the novel and the book, there it's not revealed. Um, throughout the movie, like, there's like little tricks, like there's sound played over when they say their name. Um, also, camera tricks where their the name last name is cut off and all that. Um, so yeah, I, I thought that was really stupid. I thought that was still a really really stupid idea. Um, and because of that, I'm giving it an A minus. Actually, I'm gonna give it an A minus because of the fact that the name is never revealed. Well, that's just stupid. I mean, it's one thing if you're not going to name their characters at all, like the girl, the the baron, the husband, you know, the woman, the husband, you know, that that kind of thing. If you did that, that's fine, you know. But you're going to give call them Louise de, you know, Andre de, you know, it's like it's kind of stupid. Anyway, so that's it. Earrings of Madame de, um, A minus, whatever. Um, supplements. Uh, there's an introduction from T Paul Thomas Anderson. Who we will see eventually for Punch Drunk Love. What the hell is Adam Sandler in? Um, there's interviews with uh, uh, some of Opal's uh, collaborators, Alan Giswa, Mark Frederick, and Anne uh, Wadmont. Um, a visual analysis by Tad Gallagher. Um, and probably the most interesting bit was uh, an, a short interview with uh, excerpts from an interview of Luis de Vilmorin, who wrote uh, Madame de. Um, and she, like, tears into Max. She hated the movie. She thought it was absolutely wrong. She thought that everything in that movie was wrong. Um, she thought, you know, it was, um, she thought, like, they changed all the stuff. And I guess she thought that the, um, the producers made it too commercial. So they changed all these details about the movie that she didn't like. And, yeah, so she just kind of rips into it. And 
criteria is like in this ex short excerpt, uh, Devilman shares her feel shares her opinions about the movie. It's like I hated it. I hated it. She's all like I hated it. God, it's so terrible. This is all terrible. Nothing's right. Nothing's right in the film. You know. It's like well, well, damn. That makes me feel bad. You know. It's like I mean, I I don't blame her. I mean, I I believe her. You know. So, I guess I'll have to read what it's really about sometime. Anyway, for now, here's a Madame de uh, A minus. Get a last name. So anyway, uh, that's it for today. That's it for the week. Um, as you know, next week uh, we'll be um, bringing Brother Brother Eclipse back for the Aki Karimat Protelitariat Trilogy. Um, and I'm also going to put a hold on the next couple. Uh, Yasuhiro Ozu is an autumn afternoon. And then the two Melville movies, uh, Le Doulou and Le Doulou Soufflé. Uh, Costa Garvis is Missing, uh, Wes Anderson's Bottle Rocket, uh, Christian Jacques' Fan Fan La Tulipe, Martin Ritz's The Spy Who Came In From The Cold, and, of course, Chunking Express, which is still sitting in my review that I did two months ago with Josh and Caitlin, are still sitting on my computer. And so I'll be ready to do that one. So anyway, um... That's and that's it. Yeah, and then we'll just keep moving on. So again, I'm nothing's uh, moved yet. So I'm hoping it'll move this weekend, maybe tomorrow. Um, I think maybe some people are on uh, winter breaks. Uh, some of the universities I get these library, the Criterion movies from are from are on winter breaks. So, but I'm hoping they get transferred soon because I want to get crack when I get back from when I get back from out of town. So um, yeah, so that's it for me. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate you guys sticking in with me, um, especially through these long pauses I have to give you. This has been a long season. Um, uh, tell me your last name. I um, mean, well, don't tell me your last name, but have a last name. Don't be like Madame D. You know, don't, don't just say your last name. Give, give, give it all. Just give it all your last name. So that's it for me. Thank you for watching, and I will see you all in about a week week and a half for uh, for an autumn afternoon and the eclipser we'll see you all in hopefully next week for uh, the little match girl a little factory girl ariel and uh, shadows and i forget the names of those movies the charismatic movies anyway until then goodbye